Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagaris, and today I have a ranked Skellige deck for you guys. And that is a Crack and Crate Greatsword strengthening deck, uh, which we have here. And the gist of this deck is we have this unit called the Clan and Crate Greatsword. And every two turns at the start of your turn, if this unit is damaged, reset it and strengthen it by two. So we're going to be using a self-harming strategy with the Clan and Crate Greatswords and the Light Longships in order to buff both of these, because the Longship, every turn at the start of your turn, damage the unit to the right by one, then strengthen itself by two. So what will happen is the Longship will damage the Greatsword on its right every turn and strengthen itself. And then every two turns, the Greatsword will actually reset and strengthen itself. So this damage is then mitigated by the fact that this guy buffs. And then while that's going on, what you can then do is put next to the Greatsword a Brockvar Hunter. Uh, whenever a unit adjacent to this one is damaged, strengthen itself by one. So as that guy gets damaged, he's then also gonna be strengthening. Now the Hunter and the Longship are regressing, which means they'll reset to base strength when they go to the graveyard. But the Greatsword isn't. So if we can manage to buff him a decent amount of points, then we'll be able to resurrect a lot of points from our graveyard. And he's also really good against weather because weather just deals damage, right? So then once he's damaged, he's gonna start buffing. So that's the kind of idea behind these guys. On top of that, we have three Dimmon Pirates, which we're going to be using for deck thinning. Play one, it discards the rest. And we have our three Priestess of Freyas, which we're going to be using to resurrect either the Greatswords or the Boats, depending on what we need. On top of that, we have a Restore, Return a Bronze or Silver, and Crate Twirsec or Dimmon unit from your graveyard to your hand. So we can use this to basically redraw the Clan and Crate Greatswords. So we'll put one of those into our hand. And then we can play a card. So we can actually use this to double resurrect if we... Uh, pull one of these from the graveyard and then also play a Priestess of Freya, which gives us a little bit of control against graveyard grief. We've got the one Raging Berserker, Retaliation, Transform into a Raging Bear. This is just like an extra card in here. We have a space for one card and you could kind of run what you like here. You could run, you know, a Alza Slender. If you wanted to run a Blood Coloring Roar, you could do that. But I quite like the Raging Berserker as, you know, another target for the, the Longship. We can always pop him in and have the Longship hit him. We can put him to the left of, say, a Wild Boar of the Sea if we want him to get strengthened. Um, we kind of got options, although I guess you wouldn't do that until you've damaged him because you don't want him to you don't want him to get strengthened and then damaged and turned into a bear and then you lose the berserker. You know you have to be a little bit careful with how you play this. Uh, so on top of that, we have our leader and he's going to basically damage self by one, then play the highest loyal bronze or silver unit in your deck and strengthen it by three. Then if it does not damage itself, damage it by one. So we'll use this to basically uh, pull Jenge fret. Damage two allies by one and strengthen self by two for each. So we can use him to damage, say, the, the great swords as well, which will then strengthen him. And he becomes a really great resurrect target for uh, Sigadrifa, which is really nice. We also have Donar in here as a lock and a little bit of graveyard grief. We have Gremist, which we can use to apply fog, remove weather, or blood curdling raw. Um, we have an Udalric for card advantage. And then we have our remaining gold card. So we have Coral. She's really good at griefing any kind of big boosted unit. We can turn it into a Jade Figurine. Things like Trollolol, for example, you can just straight banish because if you turn a unit into a Jade Figurine, it does get banished. So that's pretty nice. We have Burner Bran. She applies Skellige Storm to the opposite row. And because a lot of people aren't running Weather Clear at the moment, I think Burner's pretty good. You know, instead of her, you could always run Eskel. I know a lot of people are kind of enjoying running Eskel as, as clear, but I feel like, you know, Coral does the same thing. Alternatively, Igni can be quite good because there is a lot of row stacking going on. Um, so there's options with, with Burner, but I like to run Burner myself. And we have Avalak for card draw because long rounds are really good for us in terms of buffing our units. And then we have our, obviously, our Wild Boar of the Sea, which is like a fancy, like, long ship. So we can use that, again, to deal damage to a greatsword and also to buff the unit on the left. So we can always put, you know, say a Dim and Pyra on the left and start to buff him up as well and give us an alternate resurrection target. So that is the deck. If you like this deck, hit that thumbs up button. It's a bit of an all or nothing deck. Either they disrupt what you're trying to do or you end up with like a bagillion points. Um, but yeah, if you like this deck, hit that thumbs up button. And without further ado, I'll jump into a ranked game and I'll showcase this deck in action for you. I shall not repeat Elia's mistakes. You've got the heart of an uncrate. Okay, so we're up against John Calvay and Spies, which is a bit of a pain in the ass matchup because they are able to kill a lot of our units and having your units killed is kind of frustrating. So ideally, you know, we want a lot of resurrects here. I'm gonna mulligan the Raging Berserker here. We've got a couple great swords, which is good. We have a boat, we have a resurrect, we have a restore, we have a hunter. Hunters aren't bad in that we can use them to kind of get set up, but you know, if we can't set up our combo, then we might have a harder time with this. So potentially it might be worth, you know, just passing on the hunter and 
keeping the great swords. The other thing we have to worry about is the Vicar of our medics because he is going to want to, you know, try and graveyard grief us, and that is something that's worth being kind of concerned about. I think for now we'll mulligan the hunter because I do need to try and find Resurrect. Gremist is good. It's really good for dealing with rot tossers. We've got a boat. We've got Udalric. I think this is probably as good as we're going to get it. Unfortunately, like a, a, another resurrect would be nice, but I don't really know what I want to trade out for it. Maybe Udalric, but you know he can be quite useful. So we go first, which is unfortunate. A Dimmon Pirate would actually also be good to thin the deck. So we'll play our Greatsword and get this set up. He's probably just going to straight assassinate it. Hey, look, he assassinated it. Um, we have another one, so I guess we play this. Uh, we can play this here. And then if he has another assassin, he has another assassin. We have to kind of drain his assassins, unfortunately. That's just how this works. So he hasn't got any more yet. Uh, there's an Imperial Brigade. So now we can play our long ship to the right of this. And that's going to get that set up. He shoots a unit. He'll probably shoot the boat. The boat is a more sensible target. Because if he can kill the boat, um, you know, that, that kind of messes with my strategy. But we've, we've more or less got things set up here. Which is actually quite good. We could pull Jenge now, but maybe that's a bit risky. We could also play a Resurrect, but if we play a Resurrect, we're kind of putting ourselves in a bit of a risky situation as well. Udalric's not a bad play. Uh, this will give us an extra card, and then we can also potentially play Burner on the same row. The issue is that he's probably going to want to try and kill things. We don't really have a lot of great cards in terms of our hand here. here. Normally, Dim and Pirates would be good. Avalak or Hunter. We'll take Avalak here. Avalak's a good pull. And I think we just we go for that play. So we can just Coral this, which means that it won't create two Lesser Guardians on the top of our deck, which is quite good. Um, if we do that, how many points behind are we? Probably should have put my Gwent Tracker on. We are 20 points behind. So we can play this on the middle row for now so and start to deal, you know, some weather damage. If he has clear, you know, he's going to clear it. But if not, we're in an okay spot with this damage. And we can always, like I say, have a lack of Guardian. And he did have clear, which is a shame for sure. But, you know, we're still getting these buffs, and if we win this round, we can maybe try and just go straight for the 2-0 strategy. I think what we'll go for for now is Avalak um, and draw some cards. At the moment, although, actually, if we Avalak now, he can probably kill my Light Longship, because that'll do 10 damage. So we want to wait, because at the moment, I don't think he has any Assassins. So maybe we just go for the Coral play straight on the Guardian, just because I don't want to break my draws. And this seems like a good way to deal with it. There's Joachim into a very boosted dude. He's got a lot of tempo here. Um, which is not so great. A lot of tempo. We could pass, but if we pass, he's probably just going to Vic of our Medica, which isn't great. I mean, we could go for Avalak, which will give us some more cards and start to give us options. Uh, which is maybe an okay call. Alternatively, we can Crack and Crate. And that's actually quite a good tempo play, so maybe we go for this. So we'll do this into Jenge Fret. I'm going to actually kill the Assassin just because if he plays another um, Empira, then he's going to get buffed. But if I kill it, that's good. And then if I target the Greatsword, what actually happens is he's going to heal anyway. So hitting him here is not too bad. And so you can see we're only like four points behind now. So we, what we could do is go for the Gremist. I don't think he's going to play Weather. And we haven't seen any Rot Tossers. And if he does play a Rot Tosser, we can just pass. So potentially what we do for now is go to that Gremist play. Into the Blood Curdling Roar. Onto Burner Bran. Into the Bear. Into the middle row. And now we're ahead. And the thing is now he can't kill them with an Assassin. So potentially we can actually just play Avalak here. Now it's safe to play Avalak because these guys are so buffed. Um, so we'll play him and pop him on the middle row. I don't want to stack a row too heavily in case of Hailstorm. So we got another boat and we got a Dimmon. So that's actually pretty good here because we can now thin our deck uh, with the Dimmons, which is good. And they're also a nine point play. So they're a decent number of points. We have Sig, so we can actually resurrect Jenge with Sig. We have, you know, Restore, so we can also resurrect the Clan and Crate Greatsword and the boat on the next turn before he could do anything if we win this round. So that's no why we're really pushing to win this round. So he might have, um, what am I trying to say? Oh, now we're quite a few points behind. This should be enough. He might have a Moren, which he'll use. Moren, is that his name? No, Men Menno, Menno. He might have, a, I think it's a Menno that he can use to kill Jenge because now that he's spying. And there's nothing we can do about that unless we had Svanriga. If we had Svanriga, we could lock him and that would stop that from happening. Um, 
So we're just going to play our, our pirates. This is actually a bit risky because I just realized I've set up an Igni on the middle row with two nines, which was kind of dumb. You would have been smarter to play this on the front row, I think. But it turns out he's passed. So this is fantastic for us because we can definitely look at a 2-0 strategy here. I need to resurrect things because he might have Vicavara medics and I don't want to deal with the Vicavara medics if he has them. But fortunately for us, we have a very prominent strategy that we can employ here with the restore. And actually this is more or less an okay hand. We could mulligan the Berserker and try and find another great sword, but we can also set up the longship with the Berserker and that's an okay play too. So I think we just leave it at this. In which case we then open with restore and we're going to restore the uh, great sword into our hand because we just do not want him to be dealing with that. And then we can go for a Priestess of Freya play or we could just play a ship. Um, it depends really what we want to do. I think we go for a Priestess of Freya just so he doesn't Lord take our ship. Patient, although we do have a spare one. Or we no resurrect insult. a great sword because we have a ship in hand. It really depends on, on what you want to do here. We have a ship in hand so maybe we go for two great swords um, and that's actually an okay play too. So let's do that. We'll play him on the front row here. And this just stops our graveyard grief that we're expecting to see from our opponent. The assassin here is okay. It's not a huge issue for us. Um, we need to be a little bit careful about Menno, but again, that's not hugely problematic either. I'm going to play out my Raging Berserker now, because then I can put the Light Longship down and damage that, and then I can play the Greatsword in between and start getting him buffed up again. And this is pretty nice. I shall do what I must. So we've got Kahir. What do you got? Emissary. Wait, your and he has spies, so he actually could have been putting these spies in between the Greatsword and the no Longship. That is a perfectly viable strategy. If he turns this into a spy, it actually doesn't matter. Because if we play the boat here, the boat will target this and then it will get turned into a bear. Which means miss. he won't get the benefit that he wants. That's a little bit annoying. A little bit annoying. Uh, do we have a way to target this? I guess we actually do, though. Because what we can do is we can resurrect the Jenge. And if we resurrect Jenge, then we can target this and gain ourselves some points. So I guess we go for that now. It would have been nice to hit this guy too, but I don't want to play both of these big point units now, basically. So we can target this, and we can target this. So we're just going to clear his spies so that if he does play, like I say, brigades and stuff, he doesn't get too many benefits. I shall not amuse mistakes. And I think all things told, we're in a pretty strong position here. We have 17 and 8 in hand, which is pretty good. And if we wanted to stop him resurrecting something, we could actually put something from our graveyard into his graveyard. Like, you can counter the Vicar Medic by doing things backwards. His problem was he just didn't have enough clear, and we had, you know, enough tempo that it, it wasn't a problem. I have no time. So there's an Impera. That is what you folk lack. Um, we'll just lock this. I'm just thinking which row to play this on. I think we play this on the middle row. We don't want to stack our rows to 25 because it opens us to Igni. And then we get to do some graveyard grief. So the question is, what do we want to take from him? Actually, I realize we can't put things from our graveyard to his graveyard. It's only a single direction. For some reason, I thought you could do it both ways. I guess we take a... Probably an Infiltrator, just so that if he does make something a spy, we can unspy it. But saying that, we are 17 points up here. There's Orcs, which is not really doing him much. So let's play this guy on the front row. I think we have to go for the 2-0 here. And Peter, which isn't really good here because like none of our units are boosted. They're all strengthened. So there was nothing really he could do. And I think going for the 2-0 was smart in case of the Vicavara medics. We didn't see them, so maybe he's not running them. But I do know a lot of spy decks which do run Vic Envara medics because they want to stop you from resurrecting things. And you can see there we had a strategy in place should he have had them. Anyway, guys, without further ado, I'll jump into another game with this greatsword deck and showcase in action once more for you. Men of Kedwin, attack! For Skellige's glory! Okay, so we're up against Hensel, and this really depends, this matchup. If it's machines, it might be a problem because they'll be able to kill our units. If it's armor, it's not so bad. The issue is, you know, we like to have long rounds and they can get quite a lot of tempo, so we have to be a bit careful with that. Mulliganing, we'll get rid of a Dimmon Pirate. We've got Don Grimace, Coral, Wild Boar, Brockvar Hunter. We need a ship, really, so it's okay to mulligan hunters if you are trying to find ships. Although we do... Oh, Jenge's not really good because we wanted to pull him with Crack. Although now I think Crack will pull a... Great sword because it would pull Donar, but I have Donar in hand, so that's the thing. And we do have the Wild Boar of the Sea ship, so we can always use that. We'll play our demons here on the front row, and I like to play units 
typically on the front row because we have units that are locked to the range row and to the uh, sorry the siege row and the range row <sighs> which is kind of a problem ones. because um, I'm trying to think how to word this. This is kind of a problem because we don't want to stack those rows too heavily in case of damage. Weather is actually not really too much of a problem for us because we have great swords. We can just put them in the weather and, you know, that's not really too bad. We'll put him here. We want to put him on the right so that we can put this boat basically in between these two units. And by doing that, what we'll achieve is... This guy will get damaged and this guy will get buffed. And we have Gremist, should he clear the weather. So we, we kind of want to encourage him to play more weather. Again and, again and, again. and a good way to do that actually is to maybe shoot this. If we shoot this, we probably encourage weather removal. If this guy dies, it's not the end of the world because we can put Jenge on the left of this boat instead. So that's okay. And in terms of our lock targets, this isn't actually a bad one. Knight Alexa may be slightly better, but if we draw a Hunter, we can actually just damage the... Knight elect, so getting their lock out here is good. And then we'll try and get him to play his weather, which I think is about to happen. Or he might just pull all of the drummers. Actually, he'll probably pull all of the drummers. Yeah, he did. So this is what I mean by, you know, getting points per round. And unfortunately, this guy got hit rather than this guy. So this guy's taking the weather damage. Um, we'll pop the boat in here now and start to get that at least triggering. He's got five armor, so, you know, not easily removed. We could also coral a unit. Uh, one of these drummers, for example. Not. Here comes the weather. So now we can actually clear the weather, which is what I wanted to do. But I don't like clearing weather until they've played a couple, because otherwise it makes our life a little bit, you know, more challenging. But uh, now we have a couple weather. It's totally okay to just get rid of it. And the problem we have here is he does have quite a lot of tempo with this, but we can pull out a second greatsword should we need it. The problem is, you know, we don't have anything to really start triggering it. And there's the pass. We are one card down. Going two cards down is actually, you know, kind of okay here because then we can go into a longer round and then we can win off just a big resurrect. So all in all, I'm actually okay with playing this. The question is, where do I put it? We need six points. So we'd have to play this one or this one. Unfortunately, we have to play one of these, but playing Jenge is actually not too bad. Because if we play Jenge, that sets us up quite nicely for Sigurdrifa, should we find her. So this is okay. Um, and you can see we got a, we got enough points here with the boat and everything. Um, and now we pass. Unfortunately, we can't resurrect this boat, so we're really hoping to draw one here. If not, we can just dry past this round and go into the next round. But honestly, I feel like bleeding here is not too bad. We got another resurrect and a berserker. We need a boat. Give me a boat, Sigur. This is a terrible hand. This is a terrible hand. Maybe we go for a dry pass here simply so that we can get things set up. But if we go for that and he plays a bunch of Knight Alex, you know, that's going to make our life quite difficult. I think we have to dry pass though. I think we just drew poorly. We haven't seen a single boat. There are three of them in here um, and we need to try and find them. So that's what we're going to go for here. I don't like to play long rounds against armor because it gives them chances to like stack things. But in this situation, I don't think we have much of a choice. If he plays Trollolol, we do have Coral. So we can use that um, to deal with the Trollolol armor strats. So that's okay. Finally. What the fuck? Dunban are like Carol. This guy's playing like a very high number of cards. I just realized this. This is like a 30, 40 card deck. That's going to mess up his like draw potential. This is a really good draw. I think we mulligan the Berserker such that we can try and find another boat. Or Bran is, uh, Burn is good too. Um, but this lets us, you know, set up our strategy with the great swords quite nicely. So I guess we just resurrect the one from our graveyard. You know, there's not a lot else in here we can pull. We can resurrect a 12 point demon at some point, which isn't too bad of a play either. But we can also target pull one from our deck with crate, crack and crate. We've also actually got restore. So we can put one of these uh, units in our hand. So we could put, you know, the great sword into our hand or the demon pirate into our hands because this is a demon and this is a and crate. What have you got? Who takes an interest in cobblers? Failure, okay. All in all, I think this is okay. I'm wondering if he has weather clear, because we obviously are running some of that. We'll play restore. So we pull the... I think we pull the demon into our hand, 
and then we play the resurrect we serve her who is and we resurrect and and the great sword and we're gonna go for middle row here just because they live on the front row and we have no more ranged units so this is okay aye, aye, and then we can put the boat here it was a bit of a power play unfortunately so we did pull his cavalry and i should have maybe th thought about that in terms of how i played this round and potentially played the boat first that was a bit dumb Tell me but just. sometimes you make dumb decisions i guess He's going to pull out another field medic and throw these cavalry back into his deck, I guess. Peddlers. Like, why would you pull that out of your deck? That was a terrible play. I'm not I'm not going to worry too much about it. I mean, the thing is, we've got a lot of points in this, so we are likely to pull his stuff anyway, is the thing. So if we're likely to do it anyway, we may as well just kind of be aware. Unfortunately, we don't have a second boat. A second boat would have been really nice here to set up two of these, because we can pull another great sword. My lads will make sure of that. Dijkstra's annoying, but you know, he is gonna die. So that's okay. That's not gonna kill that. Kind of a weird choice. I mean the alternative is what we do, is we play the Kraken crate. And then once we've got the Kraken crate, we can uh, just slot another one in here. But we do have the risk of row stacking, I guess. So let's just... Let's play him. Another great sword. We'll squeeze him in here. And there we go. He's all set up. And then what we can do is we can resurrect our good friend Jenge here. And use him to damage this guy and this guy. And in damaging those, that triggers their effect. We should also set up our coral, what but I'm just going to wait until he row stacks a bit more. And maybe we go for the front. Yeah, we definitely go for the back row here with coral, now that it's that stacked. So he's got banards, which means I guess he's going for alchemy cards. I believe that's what they draw. It's like mulligan a card and draw an alchemy card, which is like D-bomb, D-shackles, potions, that sort of thing. A bronze spell or alchemy card, yeah. So maybe he's got a spell. Anyway. Oh no, wrong card! Bollocks! I misclicked! Oh, not like this. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to play I meant to play Burner and I played Coral because they're both fives. Ooh, I hope this doesn't cost me. This might cost me. I've no a interest lot. in politics. Sile into Shackles. Shackles is annoying, for sure. Because it means I have to wait for these to die. This is still getting buffed every round though. Let's play the actual card I wanted to play. And not freaking coral. Oh, that was super dumb. What can we resurrect? A demon for nine. I guess if this guy eventually dies, we can resurrect him. But I don't think we have enough rounds to do that in. Unfortunately. Where are you going to frost? Probably back row. Back row is sensible into frost. I mean, we can help him along with Jenge, to be honest. Like, if we resurrect Jenge, we can help kill this Ancre. I just don't think we have enough turns to actually resurrect it in. The goddess protect you from all evil. So we'll take him. I guess we put him in the back row. The back row, I don't want to stack it too much for Hailstorm, though. But then if I do this, I open myself to Igni. But this row's open to Igni anyway. So we'll shoot this, and we'll shoot this. And by shooting him, we buff him. And by shooting him, we make him dive sooner. And apparently we're pulling his Dunbanner as well. But I kind of realized that was going to happen anyway, like with how far ahead we are. We have 14 in hand what and this is 10, so it's not too bad. And he's just stacking the back row here. This is such a weird Hensel deck. I was like, okay, it'll be like a standard armor deck. And it opened up like a standard armor deck with some weather. And now it's just degenerated into like a clusterfuck of lots of cards. I think Northern Realms is the one deck you can go for if you want to do more than 25 cards. Like Northern Realms works quite well with that. But I really don't understand this guy's win condition. Like how are you going to find your golds and your silvers? No idea. So I don't think I can kill this, unfortunately. And um, a hunter would actually be really nice here because I could have slotted that in between these two and then he would have been getting buffed for all this weather. But all we can really pull here is a demon with the resurrect. This guy's going to take one more damage. I guess we have to take the risk and play the demon on the off chance that he does shoot the great sword. I don't think that he will, but on the off chance that he maybe lacerates or something. Although now he'd probably lacerate the back row. I probably should have put this on the middle. But then I'm opening myself up to marigolds. So... What is the right decision? We are getting five points of attrition damage per turn though. And this guy's buffing by two for every one. So we're getting one point here, even though we're taking, you know, two per turn from the weather. I'm surprised he didn't go for more shackles if he's got one with the Banard Tutor for the like long ship. 
Shani. What are you going to resurrect? More weather. You should put that on the far left. There we go. So a little bit of common sense coming out. And frosted the front row. Oh, it's annoying. But what can we do? We resurrected Dimon. We'll put him on the front row. I mean, we've got 40 odd points on him. So I feel like we have a decent amount of chance to win this round. And he's playing such a heavy card deck, he's unlikely to have many golds. Okay, that's probably Commander's Horn. Decoy? What are you going to decoy? Sile, okay. So then you play Sile, you have a spell in hand. Thunderbolt. And you draw a card. Is that card worth 23 points? I assumed it would be Commander's Horn, but I don't think it's enough for him. I think all things told, we've just got enough. I guess he put armor on these so we're not getting the attrition as well. This guy will take one. And we'll take four. And this guy will get buffed one. Mutagen. You have to buff something there, because I have nothing that's really worth... Like, nothing is really boosted, so that's not going to work out for him. This is the thing, you guys. Like, this is a master player. So, objectively, he's, you know, okay at the game. He's not terrible, but... I don't know what the hell that deck was. And, you know, I'm, I'm afraid to ask, to be honest. If you guys have any idea what he was trying to do, you know, let me know. And, uh... <laughs> beyond that, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, you can always subscribe. Um, and you can catch me live streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagorus, and on Twitter, at Jagorus. Uh, if you want to, yeah, comment, tell me what you think of the deck, what you would change, if there's any decks you want me to try out, if you want to see me play on the pro ladder, let me know in the comments below. Beyond that, have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully catch you guys in the next video. Bye!